Hey there team, your mate Barry Watson here. Great to see you again. Now, if you're looking for a three season, two person tent for your next wild adventure, getting that decision right is really important. What I'd like to do is to be able to show you some buying criteria that a lot of backpackers use for choosing a tent. I'd also like to go through some pros and cons of some really popular tents out there, and also uh, help you avoid some bogus claims that manufacturers make when you choose the best tent for you. So if you're ready, let's rip into it. With so many good tents on the market to choose from, where on earth do you start? From listening to and looking at what other backpackers buy, it seems to me that the most important things that people focus on can be summed up in the three Ps. The first one is pounds. In other words, how much does it weigh? Ideally, you want a tent that's as close or less than two kgs. Second one is performance. You're looking at the quality, thickness and functionality of the fly and the floor to name a few things. You want something that's going to keep you dry when it's damp or wet. You also want adequate space on the inside. I'd suggest as close as you can to three square meters is awesome on the inside. Another must have for many people is to have a tent that's got double doors so that you can each have your own entrance and exit together with good vestibule space. And the third one is price. Appreciating that tents in this space range from anything from under 20 bucks to over a thousand, you want something that fits within your budget and represents really good value for money. So what I'd like to do now is give you some pros and cons of some really popular tents out there. I'd really appreciate your thoughts on them too, so please put in the comments what you think. First up is the very cheap and cheerful option of which my $18 Kmart tent fits the bill. It has average internal space and despite it only being single walled, it is unbelievably strong in atrocious weather. However, since it comes with no guy lines and is no vestibule, I'd suggest this tent is best kept for kids in the backyard or as backup insurance when a hut is full or you want the best of a hut and privacy. One of the best known and most popular tents among backpackers in the world is certainly the MSR Hubba Hubba. Given how popular it is, you'd expect it to be great, right? Well, in my humble opinion, given its size, quality and performance, I'd suggest it's a bit overpriced for what you get. However, while in store, I was really excited because I did get a chance to look at the new Hubba Hubba 2. So was this upgrade going to cause me to fall in love with the Hubba Hubba? Well, I did like the look of its new barley corn color together with its slim down weight of only 1.47 kgs. Sadly though, the lighter weight has come about from some harsh sacrifices to its performance. The thickness of the floor and of the inner mesh has been trimmed down to achieve this weight loss, meaning the floor isn't as strong nor as waterproof as it was before. The pegs are very small and are more focused, um, in my opinion, on saving weight than on anchoring the tent to the ground. Oh, and did I say the new model is even more expensive than the already expensive previous model? The other thing I do question though is the Y-type pole connectors usually found at the ends of this tent and similar other tents. To me, this is a potential breaking point, especially in strong winds. Contrast that with the MacPack Duolite, which has its pole connector positioned at the top of the tent, which I'd suggest gives a tent greater strength from strong wind when it's guyed out properly. So I'd be really interested to know your thoughts on this aspect of the tent. Next up is a Nature Height Cloud Up 2, which I call the lingerie tent, and I'll show you why in a minute. This tent is a very popular option for backpackers due to its lower cost, lightweight, double walls with good internal and vestibule space. However, it's only got a single entrance and its lightweight is achieved by a very thin 10 denier fly, hence why I call it the lingerie tent, because when the sun's shining on it at a certain angle, if you're changing in it, you can see everything, which is probably not what you want and not what other people want to see either. Unlike its sister, the Nature Hype Mongar 2 comes with two convenient side doors and with a fly that's twice as thick, so there's no lingerie look happening in this tent. It also comes in various colours, including the very appealing, to me at least anyway, purple, which I bought. The other cool feature of this tent is the option to buy the extended vestibule, which is great when you want to shelter from bugs and the rain and simply want more room for yourself, your gear and also to cook in. 
Now on the last video I did, I did talk about the Mont 10 and really this is the brand that I've been very impressed with and really fallen in love with. The uniqueness of its floor with its 25,000 millimeter hydrostatic waterproofing rate together with its really strong 9 millimeter DAC poles and its all round quality and price point make it one that I'd suggest you may want to put on your to look at list. Oh, before we carry on, I want to share with you three cautionary things that you may want to be aware of before you buy your next tent. Although at first glance this picture looks pretty normal, however upon closer inspection you'll see that each person is actually sleeping at different ends to each other, why? Because the tent is very narrow. And let's face it, how often do you pitch a tent that's on perfectly flat ground? So if you have a slight slant, someone is going to unfortunately have a very uncomfortable night's sleep. Some manufacturers really like to talk up a tale and tell you that their three season tent is actually all weather or four season, when actually there's no way that they are ever near that. With fabric that's only 20 to near thick and large unsupported panels that'll really get whacked in the wind, you'll quickly see what I'm talking about. And if you really want to see what a true four season tent looks like, please click the link in the description and I've got a specific video on four season tents. As I mentioned in previous videos, in the efforts to make their tents seem lighter than what they really are, not all manufacturers tell you the real weight of their tents, so ensure that the advertised weight includes all pegs, poles and guy lines. And in the notable mentions and worth a look categories, the Bushbuck Horizon with its 8000mm waterproofing on the floor and the fly certainly fits the bill there. And in terms of A-frame tents, the Ultralight Dyneema Z-Packs are right up there, together with the handmade Hilleberg Anaris and the ever-popular Lanson 2 Pro. And other well light brands include tents from MacPack, Van Gogh, Terra Nova and Wild Country. So thanks for tuning in today, I really appreciate that. I'll be really interested to hear what your best three season, two person tent is. Please put it in the comments below. And of course, until I see you in the next action packed, informative and slightly humorous video, always stay safe, stay strong. See you in the next one everyone, bye.